before we go into the weekend, I thought it'd be a good time to refresh and update everyone on the latest involving Justin Fields and Kirk Cousins, one of them potentially coming down to Atlanta. So let's get into the latest on what we're hearing involving these two quarterbacks. And let's start with what appears to be the favorite in the clubhouse, which is Kirk Cousins. Now, the Falcons have been doing a lot of research on both quarterbacks, and it is definitely smokescreen season. But as of things stand, as things stand right now, it looks like Kirk Cousins is the number one target. Diana Rossini recently said, is this real? Is this, a, is this a play? And I can tell you that the Atlanta Falcons' interest in Kirk Cousins is very, very real. So like I said, it looks like Kirk Cousins is the number one target for Raheem Morris, which I think it's important whenever you're doing a quarterback search for a team to try and look through the lens of the head coach, the GM, some combination, whoever's really calling the shots. And Arthur Blank's definitely a part of this. And while Justin Fields definitely has a very high ceiling and there is a lot of appealing elements of his game, Kirk Cousins is... I wouldn't just say the safe route, right? He is a very good quarterback that if you can look past the injury, which with modern medicine, I think athletes are pretty good at recovering, and the contract with a bigger salary cap, maybe the Atlanta Falcons don't see a single hurdle to signing Kirk Cousins. I personally still think Cousins stays in Minnesota. And I think that's why the Falcons are doing so much research and so much preparing and prepping for a Justin Fields trade. Because if Kirk Cousins ultimately does stay in Minnesota, they have to be ready to pivot to plan B. Now, Kevin O'Connell spoke to the media during the NFL Combine. I want to remind you guys of what he said. My feelings on Kirk Cousins haven't wavered in two years. If anything, they're stronger now. Kirk Cousins knows how I feel about him. I have no secrets there. He knows how the Minnesota Vikings feel about him. I believe Kirk wants to be a Viking. And we're going to work to try to make that the outcome. I think at the end there, Kevin O'Connell kind of gave himself an out so that if people start banging on his door, if Kirk Cousins leave and asking, why isn't he back? You can say, I told you we were going to try at least. But let's be real for a moment. Whether it's football, just life in general, when two parties share a common goal, which in this case is remaining in the Minnesota Vikings franchise, Nine times out of 10, 99 times out of 100, what usually happens? They get it done. Now, sometimes it doesn't happen. Sometimes in sports, because of the contracts, it falls through, where ultimately the two sides cannot come to an agreement. And maybe that's what's going to happen here. But part of me feels like Cousins wants to stay, and the Vikings want him back. A couple million dollars in a contract negotiation really going to get in the way of a deal being made? doesn't seem likely now maybe one side changes their opinion and they don't want them they don't want to come back or they don't want cousins to come back but for now all indications are cousins wants to stay but he also wants the market to be known i could leave so that, he, that way he doesn't get low ball by the vikings and they say well what other option do you have we know you want to stay with us anyway right he wants the entire world to know i could walk Right, evidently, that's where we get the idea from Mike Florio, pro football talk, that Kirk Cousins was looking into buying a home in Atlanta. He wanted to make sure Quezzy Dofa Mensa and Kevin O'Connell read that first thing in the morning so that they up their offer for him. Now, the funny thing about that was Mike Florio then went on Pat McAfee's show and said, I'm even hearing that Kirk Cousins is reaching out to Kyle Pitts about getting his number eight jersey which Kyle Pitts quote tweeted and said, this actually is funny. You guys come up with anything, which is so ironic. Because if you remember, just a few short days ago, Mike Florio got super butthurt when people were calling cap on him for having an actual scoop on Kirk Cousins getting a home in Atlanta. And he tweeted this out. To the folks who try to dismiss our reports by saying we have no sources or whatever, you realize we had like 50 guests on our show last week from Indy, right? You realize pretty much everyone in the league reads PFT, right? You realize I've been doing this 23 years, right? So you got really upset when everyone's like, Mike, you don't have any sources. Now, how would you know Kirk Cousins is looking into getting a home? And then he says, yeah, he's even looking to get the number eight jersey from Kyle Pitts, who just says, 
That's just not true. So unless Kyle Pitts is doing his absolute best to go to war for Desmond Ritter and he wants to shut down QB rumors, now i got to question everything that comes out of Mike Florio's mouth. So let me know. The age-old question. Is Kirk Cousins a Falcon? I think at one point I might, and you guys can you know dig into old videos from months ago. I might have said a, a certain Patriots coach was a Falcon. I don't remember. Who keeps track of that stuff? But Justin Fields is definitely a Falcon. You guys are going to kill me if this doesn't happen. Um, but when it comes to Kirk Cousins, I have not been coy when sharing my opinion on him versus Justin Fields that I prefer Justin Fields. And there's a handful of reasons why age, contract, and injury – are all very important reasons why. And I don't feel like Atlanta is truly just a quarterback away. Whereas, like like I said like on yesterday's video, I think the Bucs were a quarterback away. I think the Falcons have some more work to do, and they may not time up with the best few years remaining in Kirk Cousins' NFL life cycle. But make no mistake, if Atlanta signs Kirk Cousins, we're not having a funeral on this channel. This is not going to be a, oh my God, this is a joke of a franchise. Kirk Cousins... I think is going to be in the Hall of Fame. Um, he's got the numbers. Now, he doesn't have the signature postseason victories, and maybe that's something the voters hold against him, but that's going to be something that people roast me in the comment section for. But, man, Kirk Cousins has been one of the best quarterbacks just going off the box score, which that shouldn't be the only way you evaluate a player, but I do think it's a, a good starting point at least. And I ultimately... Uh, I, I even hate myself for doing this, but I did a blind quarterback resume. And I picked four notable quarterbacks, and I looked at their last 50 games. I don't think it would be fair to look the last two years because Kirk Cousins missed half of 2023. So I went back and looked at their last 50 games and look at their yards per game, touchdowns, interceptions. And you guys can try and pick you who you think who is who or who's ahead of who, but I mean, pause it right now if you want to take more time to think about it. Here are the answers. Kirk Cousins has more touchdown passes than Josh Allen, than Matthew Stafford, fewer interceptions, more yards per game. Aaron Rodgers has not beat by 10 touchdowns and fewer interceptions, and that's the reason why Aaron Rodgers won back-to-back -back MVPs. So if Kirk Cousins is hanging with this crew here, there should be no one out there saying Kirk Cousins is a bad quarterback, right? The only reason why I'm not rushing to the altar to get Kirk Cousins down to Atlanta is he's going to be a 36-year-old quarterback coming off an Achilles tear, and he's going to have a massive contract that I don't feel like is best suited for Atlanta's current roster state, where I do think, and this may not be the popular opinion, I do think they are a few more pieces away from being a team that can make the playoffs to a team that can hang with the Philadelphia Eagles and the Actually, that's too much credit for the Eagles. Really just the San Francisco 49ers in the NFC. So if not for the Achilles, the age, and the contract, no one should be against signing Kirk Cousins. But if you are hung up on those things, I can't convince you otherwise, and I don't think I'd convince myself otherwise. But let's not clown around here. Kirk Cousins is a very good quarterback that if he didn't have the stigma of can't winning in primetime for like that 2017 to 2021-ish stretch, I think he'd be a, a lot more respected in this league. All right, let's switch gears now. Let's talk about the latest revolving around Justin Fields. Because if Kirk Cousins is plan A and they can't get Kirk Cousins, well, it looks like Justin Fields might be their next best option. Or it's smokescreen season. And the Falcons want the Bears to know Justin Fields isn't even our number one guy. That way they can get him for a little bit cheaper from Chicago. But here's a rumor coming out of the Windy City. The trade market for Justin Fields is not very big. Now, this is the NFL smoke offseason, so there's always going to be misdirection, and teams are going to put things out to the media that they want other teams to think. Like, for example, Drake May all of a sudden is slipping in draft um, projections and big board rankings. Why do you think that is? is it does he suck now? He hasn't played a snap since the end of the season. What's changed from now to then? What's changed is a team like the New York Giants wants the New England Patriots to think Drake May sucks so they don't take him so they can get him at number five. Like You always got to look at some of these stories coming out that are leaked from teams and think, why do they want this to come out? 
what does a game them advantage wise? And maybe this is something Atlanta's doing where they are showing interest in Cousins, so the Bears call and go, all right, I know we were looking for a second, but we'll take your offer of a third. We're afraid we won't get anything at all because you're in love with Kirk Cousins, as we've heard. Now, when it comes to Justin Fields as a quarterback, as a player, I think I haven't been shy when it comes to saying I'm a fan of Justin Fields. I think he's gotten a bit of a raw deal in Chicago. The head coach and the GM that drafted him were fired a year later. The next head coach and GM and offensive coordinator that came in, well, they don't have a track record of being really good. Like, Matt Eberflus is, I mean, beyond lucky to still have his job. His offensive coordinator, Luke Getze, was fired. And the GM, Ryan Poles, he's made some nice moves, no doubt about it, but Man, he almost lost Jalen Johnson. He requested a trade. He was the number one corner by Pro Football Focus last year. He traded Roquan Smith away. He traded for Chase Claypool. I mean, it's not like he's got a perfect track record either. Now, Justin Fields last season missed some time due to a finger injury. Only played 13 of the 17 games. But what I thought would be helpful was, let's say Justin Fields played the entire 17-game season. I just prorated his stats from what he did in 13 and stretched over 17. And that's a quarterback that throws for 3,300 yards, rushes for 850, so we're talking over 4,000 all-purpose yards, 26 touchdowns and 12 interceptions. Is that a guy you can get behind? Now, of course, that's a big if. Like We haven't seen Justin Fields play a full season, and that's probably something that's finding, finding itself on the con list when it comes to trading for a quarterback that, through three years, has battled injuries every single season, and the number one ability is availability. But I can't help but find myself watching Justin Fields' highlights before going to bed every night. So I still think this is the number one guy for Atlanta. A homecoming with Bijan and Drake London. Roma Dunes there, Malik Neighbors at eight. I didn't say it. No, I did. How could you not be romantic about that? So my original trade projection was Chicago gets Atlanta second and a future fourth that's a conditional, kind of like Calvin Ridley. Maybe it's gone down. Maybe the market truly has dried up and Atlanta can get Justin Fields and still hold on to pick number 43 in the draft and have two picks in the top 50, eight and 43, give up one of their two thirds, one of them, you know, they've the one from Jacksonville and then their own, and then a future third round pick. Now, who do you think would win this trade? Not would you do it, but let me know. Would it be the Falcons or would it be the Bears? I feel like Atlanta getting Fields for two thirds even if it doesn't work out, you didn't pay an arm and a leg. I like the re reward for the low risk here. Well, that's going to do it for us on this edition of Falcons today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We will have more content coming out throughout the weekend, so make sure you have your notifications on. NFL Free Agency is almost here, so lots more news and rumors coming your way, which is why you got to be subscribed to the channel.